eight weeks. Uh, so I definitely know what I'm talking about when I talk about serverless architecture. Um, so uh, serverless architecture um, is it, it's a it's a progression of servers from big boxes to not big boxes. Um, we started with mainframes, and you had to be a fairly specialized person to ever even get into those rooms. We then went to racks and colos, where you had bare metal servers that you put into a rack, and either you were managing that yourself or you were renting rack space from someone else. Um, now, fortunately, we're dealing with uh, VPS, VPSs and software, uh, servers that are software. But pretty soon, we're going to be dealing with none of that. And that's the promise of serverless architecture. It's a further abstraction of the server away from the developer, but it's not actually a removal of the server itself. You obviously still need to run things in places. So what does that mean? Let's take a look at some architecture of an app. So we're all pretty familiar with a single page app at this point. This is what we've been dealing with. Um, on one side, you have Angular, your models, your views, your controllers. They deal with factories. Those send requests over to a server where you're running Mongoose, Express, and Node. Um, but this is a, obviously a massive oversimplification of what a production server actually looks like. In the real world, it's going to look a little bit more like that. You're going to be dealing with uh, security and load balancers. You're probably going to be spreading your traffic across multiple nodes. Those nodes are probably going to be running things like Nginx. They're definitely going to be serving static files. You're definitely going to have a lot of routes in all of those. Each of those are going to be spawning up multiple node processes to deal with the things that are coming in and out. And those are going to be talking to uh, databases, which hopefully have failover and backup in case something ever happens. You're also going to be dealing with fault tolerance. You're going to be dealing with uh, all the logs you're collecting, all your analytics, um, and, and then patching your operating system, making sure that everything uh, is secure and locked up tight and optimized. That's stuff that is DevOps. We are not ops. We are dev. And so this is what we want to be doing. We want our factories to have a series of uh, routes that talk to specific functions. Those specific functions might call other functions and hopefully maybe persist some data. This is what we want to be doing, and everything else should just be magical. So this, again, is what serverless architecture is all about. It's about abstracting the server away from the developer to as great a degree as possible. But we're still going to have a server. Um, so let's take a look at that. Um, as they say, a line of code is worth a line of code. So uh, let's try and do some live coding. Um, this is Amazon. Amazon has a service called Lambda, which allows you to run code in response to specific events. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new function. Um, Lambda gives you uh, some blueprints to get you started really quickly. We're just going to go with the simple hello world. Uh, function. So I am going to do something that you guys are probably pretty familiar with. And anyone shout out if you recognize this from Foundations. Um, so we're going to go with a massively contrived example of running a calculator in the cloud. Don't ask me why you would ever want to run a calculator in the cloud, um, but it's super fancy. Um, so the bare bones of a Lambda event are, uh, or a Lambda function Notice, I'm, all I'm doing is, is writing code in a browser. Um, we have an event and a callback are the two main things that we're going to get. The event works a lot like a uh, request body. So it's going to have things attached to it that you send into it. Um, and then we're going to do some stuff. And then we're going to do a callback. Um, and we're actually going to, if we just do uh, calc equals new calc, oops. And we're going to give that the event. We're going to send in something called total. Um, then we're going to run calc on the event on the event uh, action. Let's call it that. And we're going to do it with an event value. Th What's that? And live coding. <laughs> Gotta love it. Um, and then we're just going to down here. We're just going to return calc.value, and we're going to go ahead and invoke that. That's all we're going to do. Um, we're going to call this calc just because I am incredibly creative with my naming. Um, we're going to give it a basic execution rule. There's a lot of other things that you can do in terms of security. 
Um, but we don't really have time to go through that. Um, so let's just create that function. We could test this, but let's do something that's a whole lot more interesting. Um, so we're going to send it stuff. But how do we send it stuff? Amazon also gives you something called the, the API gateway, which allows you to create arbitrary uh, routes to arbitrary functions on Lambda. So we're going to go ahead and create one. Apparently, I forgot to delete my test calc route, so we'll call this calc2. Um, a, another route. We're going to create this API. OK, fantastic. Um, so we're just going to create a method. It's going to be a post method. And with this method, we're going to give it a lambda function. I'm currently running in the US East Coast. And we're going to call it. This is the, the function that I just created and named. So now we're going to give it permissions. For funsies, we're also going to enable uh, cross-origin resource sharing, just so that I can do some stuff that uh, you'll see in a second. Uh, Cross-origin resource sharing, for those of you who don't know, helps prevent cross-site scripting. It's very annoying for developers. Um, and then all we're going to do is we're going to deploy this. So let's go ahead and call this beta, because it's fully functional and very advanced. So now, anytime we do a post request to this URL, it's going to take the object that we post to it and run it through our Lambda function. So let's go to, let's actually go ahead and plug this in. This is a static, uh, static Angular controller and static uh, front end that is incredibly advanced, and you will see this in a second. I'm going to hop over to S3, which is a static file store on Amazon. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and upload that file that I just saved. If I, all right, full stack, seniors, tech talk, uh, code, calc form. Let's call it calc form. Um, and now, once it's done uploading, this is statically hosted. So I'm just going to go right here. So this is a, a, an Angular app that's loaded into my browser. Um, as you'll see, these are just arbitrarily populated numbers, and they're randomly generated. I'm randomly assigning plus or minus, so I can click through it really easily. Um, when I click equals, it's sending a request to Lambda, and it's sending this object back. So 14 plus 32, uh, negative 14 plus 32 is 18, 55. So this calculator is working, and all it's doing is running sending data to a server. The server is sending stuff back. Obviously, a very, very simple and contrived example. But you can imagine that if you were doing something more, uh, much more heavy, like image processing or encoding MP3s that is a discrete process, this would be incredibly useful. If you were pers persisting it to a database on MLab or on uh, Amazon's uh, relational database service, you can do that directly. And you never have to worry about your server the operating system, load balancing. This is just a function. You can run as many functions as you want, and Amazon will magically scale that up for you. So back to this. Um, so there are obviously pros and cons to it. Um, so there's no maintenance. You don't have to worry about the ops side of DevOps anymore. Um, it has infinite scalability because they're just functions that run. And you can run those as many times and often as you want. Um, you've heard separation of concerns a lot. This almost forces you to separate concerns. Because you can have one, one Lambda function be one thing. If it fits into a module where you do module exports, it would fit perfectly as a, as a um, Lambda function. Um, isolated processes, so if one of your things fails and crashes, it's not going to crash your server anymore. But if that's why you're moving to serverless architecture, you're probably looking at code quality first, um, because this might not help with that. Um, also, it's just-in-time resources. You don't have to maintain a high CPU, high memory server to run an occasional process that's going to need those, those resources. You run it, Amazon provides you, or your whatever uh, serverless uh, server you access will provide you with those resources for exactly the amount of time that you need it. Um, the downsides, though, is that you lose control. If you need a specialized for a specialized process, you need to run your own specialized server with your own specialized process. Um, if your process is run for a long time, uh, this might end up costing you more money than just running your own server. Um, so it's a 
trade-off between money and uh, your skill and the, the amount of brain power that you want to spend on it. Um, and, and there's somewhat of an ecosystem lock-in. There's not many people running this kind of service right now. Um, and once you go down that rabbit hole, you're relying very heavily on third-party services. So there is a lot of lock-in. So to summarize, it's great if you can break down your app into microservices. And if you want to know more what microservice is, I highly encourage you to look it up. It's the future, apparently. Um, it's not great if you need full control over long-running and specialized processes. If you want to dig in more, Amazon, uh, AWS, Amazon, Lambda, there is a serverless meetup in New York. There's only about 90 people in it. It's pretty new, um, but they're incredibly smart people. Um, so take, it, take a look. Um, a couple of places that have really good uh, answers on what serverless is, much better than I can. Um, this is a great uh, blog. If you want to dive in and do a longer tutorial, uh, it's a great uh, walkthrough. And any other questions, uh, let me Google that for you. It's a fantastic resource. Just type in serverless architecture. Um, so questions. Yes. 